Hello, intrepid students on YouTube. What is going on? We are picking up yet another video in this playlist for the ES Build Boilerplate series where we pick another place to deploy our app to. In the previous video, I chose Render and it was very straightforward and very simple. Uh, it produced no extra configuration files. It all just kind of ran from the automatic dropdowns generated by that platform. In this video, we're gonna try doing Render, another free tier deployment. In the next one, I may consider doing Heroku. Um, but the problem with that is you can't really follow along unless you pay for a deployment, which is very annoying. But in this one, yeah, I might stop here. This is going to be for fly instead of render. Now fly is going to be a little bit more complicated than the render deployment. It will still auto generate everything we need with any luck. I did this uh, once or twice off camera already to make sure that I understood what the fly deployment process was like and I can describe the configuration files required. They do auto generate for us, but I will break them down for you so you understand what's happening. So uh, what I need to do as always is to make a fresh clone of our boilerplate here and configure some things on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and write a git clone of our boilerplate to be consistent with yesterday's deployment video. What did I call the project? I called it ES series, or well, yesterday in my time. It could be days from now from when you watch this. ES build series render deploy. So I'm gonna go ahead and call it ES series fly deploy. There we go. I'm gonna CD into that project now. Install my, inst install all install my dependencies and give it a quick test whirl here. And I wanna make sure something is changed but can still work. So oh, I should have opened, uh, dang. I should have opened it with the code editor first. Eh, da, 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 da. File, open, folder, ay, ay, ay. Helping students, fly deploy. Hey, all right, so. Now that I have the project opened in VS Code, like I said, we gotta test this sucker out. Let me head over to localhost 800, no, 8000 for the website. Hello world, nice and simple, nothing to it. So I wanna make sure that my hello world can work with one additional change because I will not be going to localhost colon 3000 on the app that I'm probably gonna deploy like I was on render. So here I'm gonna set up a variable that's gonna be using my process environment node environment variable. Now this is typically only something available on the back end. If it's development, I want it to use HTTP colon localhost 3000 because I do run my server separately. And in production, I want it to add nothing. So this base URL will now replace this part of the string and simply concatenate it onto our fetches via your API service or whatever have you. Because remember, in local development, it still needs to query to localhost 3000 since the website is served on 8000. But in production, they run on the same origin or the same location, which means I don't have to add the additional host colon 3000 part, and I can just have it add to the whatever the base URL is. That base URL will be whatever fly assigns to me as an app name and the domain of where it's being hosted. So that's what's gonna have to change here. Now remember, this is typically only available on node applications, not on websites. How is this defined and working? It is defined and working from our client development right here. Our node environment is set to development and in prod it's set to production. So these are global variables I define to use in my code. I don't know why this is throwing an error. For some reason, it's not recognizing I installed React even though it's working. So this is a this is a VS Code TypeScript issue. Just ignore what we see here. It's fine. So that's what's going on in our build configuration between dev and prod. And that little change up right there is something we have to take into consideration, right? So like I said, it doesn't recognize TypeScript for some reason, which is weird that it's doing that, but okay. All right, so now that that's set up correctly, we can, oh, because I closed it. We can talk about fly. So. If you need to pause, if you want to just watch this the first go around and then skip around to do what you want to reference, or if you want to follow along as best as possible with this clone, go ahead and pause the video and go to fly.io, register for a new account, activate your email address. And there's something else we're going to have to do. Now, Render did not Render did everything from the website and a series of drop downs and connecting to our GitHub via an app, right? To create our uh, web service over there. Here, we're gonna be using their installation of their CLI, right? 
So we're going to head to their documentation. You can look up FlyCTL, install FlyCTL. It's also part of the Node app workflow. So if you go to your dashboard, click on Node, it takes you to this page. And it says, oh, you need FlyCTL. If you don't have it, then it tells you how to install it, which will take you to this screen. So if you're on Mac, if you're on Linux, or you're on Windows, just follow the appropriate commands. Note for Windows, run this in PowerShell, not in Commander. But you will once you run it in PowerShell and fully close and reopen Commander, you will have FlyCTL available as a command, which you can run. FlyCTL version to know it's installed. The first time you install it, it'll also ask you to log in, right? So it'll tell you, hey, you need to go log into your uh, log in with your account, and once you're signed in, fly off login. You will then be good to go and do whatever you want. So what I'm going to do is push this to my own repository. So I'm going to copy this one from the other day, new, just so I have it separate here. Fly deploy, create repository, and now I'm going to put add and push all this stuff to this current repository, right? Because it's going to copy it from my local machine, but it's always good to have it up there anyway. So I could just change the origin, but we're going to do a real hard turn and do a fresh get in it. Do our git remote add origin. Initial commit. I know that's such a hacky way to do it, but you know, that's what we are as devs, right? Nothing but hacky and lazy. Just do things we, you know, a, a way we already know how to do. Push it up there, and eventually we can probably set up some kind of web hook to watch this for auto deploys. But for now, I can just tell it to deploy from my particular command line individually. I don't know why it's tweaking out like that. Cause if, yeah, like the render is, doesn't like the render with me recording, but anyway, so on our dashboard yesterday in, well, I can't say yesterday in the previous video, there we go. In the previous video, when we deployed to render, it was all very simple with some drop downs on their site. But I told y'all here, we're going to be using fly CTL to do that. But there's an additional step that's going to happen here that I should preface. This is not going to be a full lesson on our friend Docker, but it needs to be a crash course on it. So you understand some terms moving forward. We will not just be deploying to a terminal and telling it to run build and run start. We need to build an image, a container, and then run our app in that container is what's going to happen here. So Docker, what is it? It's a platform that makes it easier to create, deploy, and run applications. There's a meme for this that I should have gotten ready off camera. Yeah, there it is. Hold on. Don't be tiny. All right. Here's the meme that explains Docker to all of my students. It works on my machine, then we'll ship your machine. And that's how Docker was born. This meme explains pretty dang well how Docker works. Like, it's like, hey, I have the app working on my machine even if you can't recreate it on yours. So we're like, all right, well, how about we just box up your machine in a container and ship it out? And that is exactly what Docker is. With that in mind, <laughs> with that meme in mind, like I said, it's a way to create, deploy, and run applications by using what are called containers, hence why we see a whale that looks like a ship with little containers or boxes on it. A container is like a standard unit of software that packages up code and all its dependencies, our node modules, so the applica and node and npm and all that stuff, so the application runs quickly and reliably from one computing environment to another. So you no longer have, well, it works on my machine because you can just recreate your machine as a virtual machine somewhere and everyone can then recreate your particular set of circumstances and environments that let the app work, right? So it's very unfortunate that it works on my machine is no longer a valid excuse, right? So like I said, it's like a shipping company that uses standardized containers to transport goods, which are our applications, all around the world, everyone else's computers. So an image is a lightweight, standalone executable package that includes everything needed to run a piece of software, including the code, a runtime, libraries, environment variables, and config files. It's like a blueprint or a recipe. It contains the instructions and ingredients needed to make a dish, or in our case, run an application. So a Docker image is what somebody would recreate. They would read those blueprints to create that image on their machine to recreate our machine in a Docker container. So a Docker container is a runtime instance of an image. So remember the image was the blueprints. The container is the runtime instance of the image. 
It's what the image becomes in memory when executed, right? Like an image with state or a user process. You can see a list of your running containers with the command docker ps if you have it installed. Again, don't worry about that here, uh, just like you would in Linux. So if the image is the blueprint or the recipe, the container is the house we built using the blueprint, or it's the food we made from the recipe. It's a running instance of, our, of the image in the same way a program is a running instance of a program file. So the image is the instructions, the container is the build runtime of the instructions. So with that term out of the mind, how do we deploy a node app? If you click the link, it opens this tab here, right? So we're gonna be using flyctl to deploy our file. So this, these steps up here, if you follow along with their instructions is for their own version of a node app, but we don't care about that, we want ours. Flyctl launch is the command that will look at our source code and attempt to create and configure a fly app by inspecting our code by following a set of prompts. So let's get going here. Flyctl launch. I'm gonna allow it to generate a name for me. I'm going to pick Chicago as my, yeah, that's close-ish. That's, that's like in my column in central time zone. I'm gonna pick Chicago as my primary region and we're gonna see what it's gonna do here. So it installed some configuration stuff, right? npm install fly.io docker file. So there's the docker stuff. It generated a fly toml file. It made a docker file, which means it probably made a git ignore. It found my configuration is valid. It seems to me that it successfully scanned our app and generated the appropriate con uh, configuration files to do so. Let's take a look at those. The Docker ignore is kind of like a git ignore. It tells Docker what to ignore in our image, right? So it tells it to ignore these things so that it won't need them. Uh, it generated a Docker file. Like I said, this is gonna help us create the image, the instructions to build what we need to build. So basically as a breakdown, I'll be kind of quick here. This tells us what node version we're on. I'm on 1816, so it defaulted to it, but you can specify a different node version if you need to. Uh, this will refer to it as start with a lightweight slim node image, which we're gonna call base. This is like sticking a label on our container, calling it, hey, this is gonna be a Node.js environment with the appropriate metadata. Work directory, so this is gonna set a new directory on our image and container that says, hey, this is where we're gonna do our work by building our app. Uh, we set any appropriate environment variables that we happen to need here. Whenever the app runs, it should know it's in a production environment, right? Uh, from base as build. So there are different stages in images where we can say we have a base, which is gonna be our app. We have a build, which is where we're gonna make it and we can shift them around as needed, right? So this is gonna be a build stage that we're gonna then trim down and throw away when we're done with it. So this is like a, a intermediary step, like making a new subfolder called build. This will say update the list of packages and install some necessary tools. So basically our container says, hey, to build a container from this image, go ahead and just add the following things to it. Package config, build essential, Python, right? Uh, from there, uh, we're gonna say copy the package JSON and package lock JSON contents on over to our building directory and building stage and go ahead and install npm CI our development dependencies and all that kind of fun stuff, install the necessary things that Node.js will need to run this project. This is gonna copy the application code in the Docker image, into the Docker image. Uh, build the application, that's our custom script of how to build it, so it detected that automatically for us. It's gonna then prune and remove the development dependencies since we won't need them. Then it's gonna copy uh, from the build stage to the base stage, it's gonna copy our app on over. So basically like we, in the build stage, we build everything out, trim it down to optimize it, and then copy it over back to the base stage. Say, hey, this is our base app in this image. This says what port to expose. Our image is gonna be running a virtual machine that's gonna be running our app on port 3000, and it should expose that to use, right? And that's what's gonna happen. And then this is the command to start the thing in our container that says npm run start. There you go. Set of instructions to build an to build an image that will then build the container from there, right? Now the fly toml file is specifically for fly. Toml stands for Tom Preston. Well, it's made by an individual named Tom Preston Werner, who is a co-founder of GitHub back in like 08, I think. And it stands and the extension Toml is one that was made for him, which stands for Tom's obvious minimal language. It is a 
open source way in file format for configuration files, which is what TOML stands for, right? So basically this says, this is the app name, this is the region, this is a build section. We, uh, all our Docker file contains that stuff here. This is a section for our HTTP service. Uh, that's our port. We don't have an SSL cert, so hopefully that doesn't mess us up. This is for stopping and starting the machines when they're needed or not needed. So basically, however many virtual machines we need to scale our app, they will open and close as we go. This means how many minimum machines we need running, but we're on a free tier deployment, so I don't think we have access to this stuff here. And this is the name of our app. So basic stuff for Fly to know how to scale our app if it needs to, but we're on a free tier deployment. We shouldn't have access to that stuff anyway. So let's get underway here. With all that out of the way, in order to actually launch our application here, it'll tell us that we scroll on down after all this fun stuff and say fly CTL deploy. Here is where it's reading the image, right? So basically, it's reading the image and now building the container. So it read all those instructions that our Docker file is telling it. There is the installation of Python 3, package config, build essential. So right now, it's reading the image and building our container for us, right? There's a work directory app that's created. We're about to see npm run build pop up here. So right now, like that image is telling the container what it needs to install and build. So this is the virtual machine being built for us. There it goes. Uh, there's npm ci. There's the run command to install dependencies. There's npm run build. There are my scripts that we wrote together in this playlist. They console log their values up there, but it flew past that. The image building is done. Now it's gonna go ahead and get all the stuff ready for the container. Very cool. Dead air, Luke. How are y'all doing? Doing well? Good. I'm glad to hear that. Hey, all right. So two app machines? That's going to fail because I'm a free tier deployment. Yeah, so it's going to try and write two mach virtual machines. We only have one on a free tier deployment. You're going to get an error. Uh, you need to add a payment and bill if you're going to have more than one machine, but that should be fine. We don't we don't care about scalability for these small personal projects at the, at the moment anyway. But yeah, it should have built one. So if I head back to my dashboard and refresh in my apps, we should see a list. Uh, this is the builder, the image that will tell us how to build things. This is the container itself that's shipped, deployed, and ready to go. If I click on it and access the URL, empty shadow 4836 fly dev. Hello world. We have our app now deployed on a URL on fly that can be accessed by anyone. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. I want you all to make sure to like, comment, subscribe, do all that fun YouTube stuff. I'm going to continue this series. I may deploy to Heroku. I'm kind of iffy about it. If you have any other places you want me to try and deploy this app to that you would like to see, please comment down below and let me know. Otherwise, once the deployments are over, I think I'm going to be done with this series. But um, I'm happy to add whatever you all want. So... Get involved in our community membership. For $25 a month, you get access to our front-end, back-end database and, uh, and my React course, my standalone advanced React course, as well as the future TypeScript and database courses I'm working on. And you have access to ask me what my next videos should be. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all possibly in the next video. But otherwise, hope you enjoyed the ES Build series.